their business is the business of death. Uh, and it's a lucrative business of death. In February 2016, a gang of five burst into the Regency Hotel in North Dublin during a boxing weigh-in. Three were disguised as members of the emergency response unit. One was wearing a flat cap and another was dressed as a woman. They entered the venue and opened fire. Their intended target was international crime cartel boss Daniel Kinnahan. It's alleged the man dressed as a woman searching the venue for Daniel Kinahan is Patrick Hutch, a nephew of Jerry the Monk Hutch. Daniel Kinahan managed to escape out the back of the venue, but key Kinahan gang member David Byrne was not so lucky. The 34-year-old was fleeing the way in with everyone else when one of the armed men recognised him and shot him in the hotel lobby. He crawled to the reception desk and a second gunman fired more bullets into him finishing the job. The father of two was shot up to six times. The gang fled the scene within minutes. Their mission to kill Daniel Kinahan had failed. Christy Kinahan's eldest son hid behind a car before making good his escape. Ireland's bloodiest gang feud had begun. On a cold and rainy night in December 2016, Glenn Clark was seated in a stolen car parked within the Riverdale housing estate in Dublin. It had been three and a half months since his last victim on the island of Majorca. Quietly, he put on a pair of gloves and retrieved a black revolver from the car's glove box, getting ready for another job for the Kinahan cartel. As he cleaned the gun, a sudden loud noise broke the silence of the night. The gun slipped from his hands as he slumped over the steering wheel. At just 26 years old, the contract killer had accidentally shot himself in the head and died instantly. Tragically, this wasn't the first time Glenn had unintentionally taken a life. In the world of contract killings, precision is crucial. Glenn Clark, despite his rough appearance and tendency to act impulsively, was not the typical professional hitman. His career took a disastrous turn on a Saturday in August 2013 when he mistakenly targeted the wrong person in the Clundalkin neighborhood. Clark was supposed to take out James Nellie Walsh, a notorious criminal. However, due to his incompetence, he confused the names and faces, leading to a fatal mistake. Instead of Walsh, he ended up shooting Dean Johnson, a young man who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The sound of gunshots echoed through the quiet alley as Johnson fell to the ground, just yards away from his home. Clark's first mission had ended in tragedy, showcasing his lack of professionalism in the ruthless world of contract killings. He was quickly taken to Tala Hospital, but was tragically declared dead later on. Johnson was familiar to law enforcement, but was not believed to be connected to serious criminal activities or organized crime. The news of his deadly encounter spread rapidly within close-knit criminal circles. Rumors circulated that Glenn Clark was infamous as the worst hitman in Irish organized crime history, and his reputation only seemed to worsen with each mistake. However, it would later become apparent that the Kinahan organization was not overly concerned with Clark's dubious notoriety, Glenn was working for a subcell of the Kinahan cartel, led by Peter Keating, who was a close friend of Clark. Keating was involved in a feud with gangster James Nellie Walsh. Keating eventually received an 11-year jail sentence for his part in a failed murder plot involving James Mago Gately. While Clark is suspected to have been one of the gunmen in Johnson's killing, there were also others connected to the Kinahan cartel involved in the planning. A total of 10 people have been arrested in connection to the case, but none have been prosecuted in court. Clark remained free of any charges, and in 2016, he was preparing to strike once more. His target this time was Keith Murda, a high-ranking member of the Hutch Gang. On a bright spring afternoon in the Sheriff Street area, Murda was enjoying a pint at Nocter's Pub, oblivious to the imminent danger. Meanwhile, Clark was approaching the pub on his bicycle, knowing that Murda was an easy target. As he neared the crowded pub, Clark hit the brakes too hard, causing him to lose control and fall to the ground. Frustrated and embarrassed, he quickly got back up, pulled out a gun from his pocket and aimed it towards Murta. But the commotion from the gathered crowd alerted Murta, who immediately fled in sheer panic. A wild chase ensued with Clark firing shots recklessly as Murta ran for his life. Another man approached 24-year-old Martin O'Rourke on Sheriff Street. O'Rourke, a troubled man struggling with a heroin addiction and on the brink of becoming a father for the fourth time, was unfortunately caught in the crossfire. A stray bullet struck him down, ending his life in an instant. The community was in shock and chaos ensued in the aftermath of the shooting, 
Glenn's lack of skill had led to the death of an innocent man, creating pandemonium on the streets of Dublin. It was fortunate that more bystanders were not harmed, as it was later discovered that Clark had fired 13 rounds of ammunition. Martin O'Rourke had no ties to the ongoing Kinahan hutch feud. Many hoped that his tragic death would be the last, but unfortunately, that was not the case. Shortly after four months passed, Glenn Clark was sent to Majorca on a task that was supposed to be simple. Eliminate Jonathan Hutch as revenge for the Regency Hotel shooting. Hutch was on a family vacation at their usual spot in Majorca when he was identified by a Kinahan associate. Without hesitation, the cartel swiftly flew Clark out to the island on the evening of August 17th, while at the holiday complex, the Hutches encountered another Irish family, including council worker Trevor O'Neill, his wife, and three children. O'Neill and Jonathan had unknowingly crossed paths earlier that day, striking up a conversation by the pool. Later that evening, the two families coincidentally met on a busy road near the hotel and headed back together. Meanwhile, Clark had located Hutch and was tailing him closely. As he approached them, he drew his gun and attempted to shoot Hutch, but Hutch managed to flee. In a fit of anger, Clark turned to the nearest person and fired four shots recklessly. Unfortunately, Trevor O'Neill was struck in the lower back and tragically passed away in front of his wife and children. was mistakenly targeted in the criminal underworld during his fourth and final assignment when Glenn Clark attempted to assassinate Noel Kerwin, who was not actually involved in organized crime. Kerwin, who happened to be near Jerry Hutch at a funeral earlier that year, was incorrectly perceived by Clark as a threat due to his proximity to Hutch. This misunderstanding led to Kerwin becoming a target in the ongoing feud between the Kinahan and Hutch gangs. Just three months after a fatal shooting in Majorca, Clark found himself in a stolen car preparing to carry out the hit on Kerwin. However, fate intervened in a cruel twist of events when Clark accidentally shot himself in the eye while cleaning his gun. The bizarre incident resulted in Clark's own demise, showcasing the unpredictable and tragic nature of life in the criminal underworld. The scene in the stolen car was truly shocking. Blood was everywhere, and Glenn's lifeless body was slumped over the steering wheel. He had not only taken the lives of three innocent men, but had also accidentally ended his own life in a way that could almost be seen as tragically comical. The fact that Glenn Clark was allowed to carry out the murders of three innocent people reflects the lack of regard the Kinahans have for human life. Three hits, three innocent lives lost, and Glenn had solidified his reputation as the worst hitman in Irish history. Despite his numerous failures, Glenn remained employed by the criminal organization, possibly out of sheer amusement or morbid curiosity at his repeated blunders. As time went on, Glenn's ineptitude became the stuff of legend. He was known as the bumbling hitman who couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. His name became infamous in criminal circles, with people retelling his story with a mix of horror and fascination. Glenn Clark had unintentionally etched his name into the annals of crime history in a way no one could have foreseen. His tale would be passed down through generations, serving as a grim reminder that in the world of crime, 
Incompetence can sometimes be the most dangerous weapon of all. Thank you for watching today's video. We would love to hear your thoughts on the topic, so please share your comments below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos in the future.